Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today I'm going to talk to you about image compression. Are you worried about filling up your media storage in Xano a little bit too quickly? Well, I have a solution for you. What I'm going to go over today is how to leverage the Tinyfy API in Xano so you can compress images that are being stored in your database on the fly. Let's say, as an example, you have users uploading images on the front end, but you don't have a way on the front end to actually limit the file sizes that are being sent. If your user uploads a gigantic image that has a huge file size, that can add up over time. What I'm going to show you how to do today is to use the Tinyfy API to compress those images so you don't really have to worry about that so much anymore, and you can leverage your media storage a lot more efficiently. I'm going to show you exactly how I constructed this API in Xano, and I'll show it to you in action. I'll also leave links down in the description to this API so you can check it out yourself. A really cool thing about this API is there is a free tier available. So if you are worried about using up your media storage more quickly, but you don't have a ton of images coming in in the span of a month, this is a perfect solution for you. Let's get started. So this is the Tiny PNG API from Tinyfy. You can access it at tinypng.com. I'll leave a link down in the description. All you need to do is fill in your name and your email address, and you are sent an API key that you'll need to use this API. Some very basic documentation here. We do get a curl command, so you can quickly insert this into Xano. There is also some more advanced features to this API as well, uh, preserving metadata, area of interest detection, uh, cutout image detection, some pretty cool stuff that's going on here. Your first 500 images per month are completely free. Really cool. And then, of course, we have some more in-depth uh, documentation here with the API reference as well. I definitely recommend reading through this if you are going to leverage this API. In today's example, we're just going to show you how to compress the image on the fly before it is stored in your database. Okay, so here we are in Xano. What I have here is a very simple API endpoint. We are taking in an image and a user ID so we can associate that image with a user. And what we're doing here is we are first creating an image from file. We need to create the image metadata before we can really do anything else. Now, this does not store the image in Xano. We're just working with it temporarily right now. And then we are calling the Tinyfy API to actually compress this image. So let me walk you through these parameters. So what we need to do is we need to set source as an object, and inside that object, we need to have the URL to our image. Now, when you create the image from file, it does not have the complete URL to the image in that result. So we need to modify that a little bit. So we're taking the image data, which is from that create image from file dot path, which is the path to the image. But again, it's not the complete URL. So what we're doing is we're replacing slash vault with the URL for our entire Xano instance before the vault. And then here in the headers, we're pushing a content type and then the authorization. Uh, so we're using push filters here to add those. And then we also need to use a base64 encode filter on the API key. Some pretty simple stuff. Now, something that's really important to do here is the image compression can take a little bit of time. It really just depends on the size of the image that you're working with. So you want to make sure that you increase this timeout. Now, this doesn't mean that the request will always take this long, but it means that we're allowing up to 100 seconds in this case before the request times out. You can really bump this up as high as you want. I don't recommend making it super high just because if there happens to be an issue, you don't want to get stuck, but it's good to adjust this in some form. So the next step in our function stack is we are creating a file resource because Tinyfy is returning that compressed image to us but now we basically need to start from scratch to be able to work with that image inside Xano. We're specifying the file name with our original image data dot name, and then our file data is just coming from the response of that API. They're giving us a URL, and we're using that to create the file resource. After that, we have a create image from file, which is taking the compressed image and the file name, and it's generating metadata for that so it can be stored inside our table. And then finally, we're just adding the record to our database table. We have our user ID and we have our image. And in my response here, what I have happening is I'm showing the contents of the record that we've added to the table. 
and then I'm also showing the original so we can compare the size between the two. So let's take a look at it in action. Let's go to run and debug and let's get an image. So this image right here that I'm using, it's around four megabytes. Let's go ahead and open it and click run. And you can see this will take a few seconds to run, again, depending on the size of the image. Okay, so now we have our result. We can see if we scroll down and we look at our original, again, this was around four megabytes. And it looks like we've compressed this image down to around 1.7 megabytes. So less than 50% of the original size. Something like that can really add up if you have a lot of images going into your database. And if we look at our database, we scroll down a little bit, there's our new image. You can see it's retained the file name and we have our user added there as well. Very cool. A great way to utilize something like this would be to maybe add this logic to a custom function. That way, if you have any endpoints that your users are submitting images through on your front end, you can just drop this logic right in here to transform that image on the fly. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps and I hope you can kind of see how something like this may be useful, especially when working with limited media storage. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. You can join us on the Xano community or visit us in support chat if you have any questions as well. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Xano content and we will see you in the next one.